there, listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be talking about A Curse of Roses by Diana Pinguicha. This is an Own Voices debut novel that does focus a lot on Portuguese Portuguese history and Portuguese um, folklore. And I think that that's really interesting because I don't think there is a whole a lot of Portuguese authors in the U.S. market or young adult Portuguese authors in the U.S. market or even internationally. Uh, I think Diana is probably one of the few ones that I know of. Um, and I think that that's really courageous for her to really delve into her culture and bring diversity to literature and to readers everywhere. Because this novel is based in part on uh, you know, Portuguese mythology in a way. And that's why I liked it. Um, so it does follow Isabel of Aragon. She is engaged to the King of Portugal and she does have a, she does have magic. Um, she can turn food into flowers. Now to her, this is a curse because across Portugal there's a famine there is a famine going on and she can't even eat her own food it turns to flowers it's, it's such a waste for her but then she discovers that if she can free an enchanted immortal to help her with her power, she can turn flowers into food. So I thought that was really interesting because a lot of the novel is spent with Isabel. She's a devout Catholic, as you would imagine, um, during this time period. She is very much a Catholic. You know, she thinks pain and suffering brings her closer to God. And for her, this magic is just a curse, but now it can be a blessing as well. It can be a blessing. It can help the people. She can stop a famine. She can give bread to the poor to people who need it and I think that that's really courageous of her it just takes her a lot of time to learn to love herself um, because you know the teachings anything with magic you know evil 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 spawn of devil so she has pretty much gone through her entire life thinking she is not worthy of God's love she she's she hates this part of herself. And I do like the illusion there because what she also discovers is, you know, with Fatian, is that she's also not interested in men. You know, she is, she is a lesbian. This is a sapphic female, female romance, um, going on here. And I like the illusion there because Fatian really does allow Isabel to love herself, every part of herself, you know, from the magic that courses through her veins to her own identity. And I think that that's very empowering because she has to remind her. It's just like, no, 
She's like, God only cares if you're a good person, and you are a good person, and Isabel is a good person. And I like Fatian a lot. She's probably my favorite character because I related to her a lot with her beliefs. She's certainly religious, but she doesn't let religious teachings kind of lock her in a cage. She's been locked in a stone for centuries. And she's just like, I'm as religious as you, but I love myself. And the only one who's allowed to pass judgment on me is God, you know, when I do pass away. And I like this idea. I, I do. It's definitely something that I wholeheartedly agree with. Um, I definitely do think religion is deeply personal. I definitely do believe that we don't have the right to pass judgment on other people. Um, you know, it's different when it's, you know, crimes and taking someone's life. But when it comes to our sexual identities um, or our religious beliefs, I don't think we should be passing judgment on other people. Um, I think the only one who is allowed to do that is God, you know, the higher power that you believe in. That is probably why I connected very strongly to Fatian, because I don't think you should enforce your religious beliefs on someone else. Just be a good person, do good, and, you know... Whatever higher power is out there is going to judge you based on that. I don't think being judgmental or sanctimonious is going to be very, um, I don't think it's helpful to anyone, you know, that's just me. You are allowed to believe whatever you believe. You are allowed to disagree with me. That's totally okay. Um, but anyway, <laughs> back to the story. So, I really did like how Fatian encouraged her to love herself. She definitely encouraged her to learn to love herself and accept herself for who she is. And I think that that's a really personal journey as well. You really do get to see uh, the author's interpretation, her own experiences bleed into the story. And I think that that's really empowering. I think we've all been there, we've all struggled to try to fit into this mold, and does it make us happy? I don't think so. I think us just being ourselves makes us happy, accepting who we are. And I do love the dynamic between her and the King of Portugal. I will say, uh, there are times when he is very abrasive. But you can kind of see where he's coming from. You know, Isabel is starving herself because she can't, she doesn't want him to see that anytime she eats something, she's turning flowers into food. He doesn't know this. He's just like, stop starving yourself. Eat something. Eat something. Please. Eat. Um, and then when he does realize she has no interest in men, he's totally cool with it. He's just like, we don't have to have kids. We don't ever have to do this. I can legitimize one of my bastards. I got plenty of them. And she's just like, what? And he's just like, I've been to enough brothels. He's like, I know what you are and it's okay. I'm still gonna marry you because again, you are a good person and you would be good for my country. And I consider you a friend. So I did like their relationship. I did like how we did get to see a male figure. Not, not say not, um, respect a woman for her choices. He is 100%. He's like, I'm never going to take a woman against her against her will. He's like, never. It's just like, 
I'm not going to force myself on you. And she's just like, you're not? He's like, no. And I think that that's really good, you know? I think we need more male figures like that. So, to balance out all that toxic masculinity that's out in the world. And again, it is also bringing forth the author's own personal experiences. Um, I can't stress this enough. Please do read the author's note before you start the story. It does give some backstory to the legend. And it does introduce some of the author's personal experiences that you're going to see reflected in the story. And I think it really does give the story a nice measure of depth to it. As well as, well, relatability, honestly. Um, my only complaint is I feel like... I wanted more to happen, I guess, is what I want to say. I wanted more to happen, but it had a clear beginning, middle, and end. You know, it did have excellent pacing, good story development. I just feel like the ending was very... It does close the story, don't get me wrong. But... I think I just, maybe an epilogue <laughs> to just be like, and so they all lived happily ever after, you know, something like that, kind of. That's what I wanted. Um, I just feel like it wasn't a solid conclusion overall. I think it did capture the idea. I think it did... Um, capture the essence of the story to close the story properly but you know I just wanted more I wanted more that's all I can say I wanted more um so in any way in any case this was, once again, A Curse of Roses by Diana Pinguicha. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it four out of five stars. So, once again, I do think it was a really good story. I was engaged from beginning to end. I think the pacing in the middle falters just a little bit as you're getting to understand... Well, not as you, as Isabel is getting to understand and come to terms with her sexuality. So, um, yeah. We're going to go with... Um... Four out of five stars. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to go with four out of five stars. It, please remember, if you're going to purchase the book, to purchase the book from your local bookseller or online book retailer. If money's tight, please check out the, mon the um, book from your local library. Uh, the only thing I ask is please support your bookstores. Uh, you can go on bookshop.org and get a list of independently owned bookstores nearest to you and um, if you buy on bookshop.org if that independent bookstore is a little too far for you you can always purchase on bookshop.org and it'll donate a percentage and it'll tell you how much it's going to donate to that independently owned bookstore um, books just because Barnes Noble and Books a Million may not be in your neighborhood they will still ship to you Please support your book sellers. That is all I ask. Um, that is all I ask. Um, so, on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking this podcast and sharing with all your book loving friends. Hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. <laughs>